Hi and welcome to this video tutorial that is designed um, as an introduction to junk journaling. We get a lot of newcomers to our Facebook groups, Free Junk Journal and Papercraft Printables and Tutorials by Emma Parrish and Free Junk Journal Printables at the Magical Paper Pantry and also to this YouTube channel. Now you may be coming from a card making background, you may have some papercraft experience, maybe from decoupage or scrapbooking memory crap memory books and so on or you may have no experience at all so this is to give you an overview and some techniques to help you uh, make your first junk journal so this front cover uh, has got a ribbon closure we'll also be going through the terminology that we use in junk journaling as well and then we open this flip which has got a pocket on the front and a tag inside with some ribbon on the top and we open this flip to reveal a tuck spot there. And a tuck spot is something that we can tuck something underneath. We've got a long pocket on the front here and a large journaling card. Now you can see that these uh, elements add some nice interest and some dimension to our front cover. This is a stitch bound journal. So we've got some stitching down here and we've got some dangles <laughs> and on the back we've got the second half of our closure, which is also actually a pocket. So we can pop some ephemera in there. And ephemera, if you're unfamiliar with that term, is the term we use to describe all of these bits and bobs that fit inside. Traditionally, they were little vintage things, uh, but we can take that in all sorts of different directions and we can get all modern about it as well. There are no real rules. <laughs> uh, well, now we open this to reveal a belly band, which is this long strip down here. And this has a large journaling card. Uh, the journaling cards very often have a pale paper backing on the back so that you've got writing space there and you can write all over these things. They're beautiful little curios that you can really just do what you want with. I've got pretty pages that I tend to leave alone. We've got some page divider tabs here so you can flick through to different sections. We've got some nice, some beautiful, beautiful plain pages here. Now I've mixed uh, three junk journal kits in this. It doesn't take the three junk journal kits. You can do this uh, pretty much with one kit, but I've mixed and matched three because I love these three together. I'll put the links for them in the description. And we've got this smaller page that's got a pocket on it that's stuck on three sides with quite a nice big thumb cut there. I like that. I find it, that shape very pleasing. And that's got a journaling tag in it with a backing that you can write on and a little bit of ribbon. Then we've got this doily stitched into the actual uh, signature and the signature are all of these pages stuck together. This is a single signature journal to get you started. We've got these lovely large journaling cards. This is a ghost pocket. You can't see it when there's nothing in it, but it's there and you can pop things, pop things in it. We've then got this pocket here with a couple of tags in it again with all with the writing space and there's all writing space over here and here. Uh, this page gets quite interesting. We've got what we call a flip and that opens like that. And this page turns around and we've got a pocket here that currently hasn't got anything in it, but you can pop lots of ephemera in there as well. This then opens into another flip to reveal this envelope that we've stitched into the journal. And we've got a postcard there with the pale paper backing. Lots of writing space going on there. You could do more here. You could take this further. You could get another pocket. You could get another flip. You can do whatever you like with these things. It's so much fun. We've got another large journaling card and a pocket that I've shaped from a scrap. I'll also be showing you how to make use of your misprints, etc. I had a few. <laughs> when I was printing these out. Uh, this page then opens, when I'm not sticking it together, um, to reveal a little piece of plain paper here that I've stuck in uh, and stitched in to the signature. We turn that over. We've got another little flip here that's been made from a misprint, a little scrap of paper, and we can open that and open that. And we've got this large journaling space there. We've got a pretty page here that I've left. On this side, we've got another pocket with a large journaling tag and this lovely pattern paper. We can still write, you know, we can still do what we want to do in those spaces there. Then we've got a little flip here that reveals a pocket and reveals this little glassine bag that I've stitched, that I've stitched in 
to the signature. Well, that's got a little tag in it. This has got a tag in it. Loads of writing space all over the show. And they go like that. Then we've got this. This is our centre page. You can see the stitching down here. And I'll show you how to do that uh, as we move through the video. Turn that over. We've got another pocket here. Uh, room for lots more ephemera. We've got the other side of the glassine bag stitched into the signature. And we've got these lovely journaling cards, these stacking journaling cards, which equally could go in this pocket. And we've got another journaling card here on that pretty page and this pocket stuck down. Then we've got the other half of this sheet of writing paper that I haven't done anything with, but you obviously can. I've got these pretty pages that I'm just leaving because they're just so nice. <laughs> I've stuck my journal together. <laughs> when I put these page divider tabs on and I've made a little bit of a thing there I can go back and do something about that then we've got another pocket with this journaling card here we've got this beautiful place we've got the other side of the envelope that I stuck this extra page to so that's nice lots of journaling space there and uh, honouring the junk nature of our junk journal by popping these other bits and pieces in between these pages and stitching them in. Then I've got this small page here. Your pages don't all have to be the same size. They can come and go as they like. I've got this lovely tag in there. And we've got these lovely writing spaces here. We turn over to the back. We've got this final page and we've got a tuck spot. Some tuck spots can go up at the top there like that and they work very, very well. So that is the walkthrough of this journal. If you'd like to come with me and you want to learn how to basically put a junk journal together, this is the video you need. Keep watching. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using a mixing and matching three kits uh, blue daydream blue roses and butterfly blue you obviously don't have to do that this is a general tutorial for beginners on uh, the basics of junk journaling and how to put a journal together uh, now the method i like to use is that i begin by printing about six pages that i really like the more decorative of the pages like this and then I will, they come out of my printer like <laughs> this, I think. So then I will just flip that over, feed it back into my printer. And then I choose six pages, uh, I think that's upside down, that are plainer. So there are always plainer pages in the kits. And like I say, I'm mixing, mixing and matching a couple of kits. So I just randomly go for that. I don't put too much thought into it. If you want to plan meticulously, you can do. But I like that random element. And what you'll also notice is that I have printed with a border. I do have a borderless printer, but I don't like using it. Um, it uses up a lot of ink because it spits the ink out over the sides. And also when I come to make my cover, I want my inside pages to be just that little bit smaller than I'm on A4. You may well be on US letter. Uh, kits jet from me generally come in both A4 and US letter size. So what I'm going to do first of all, um, I've got my six pages. This is going to be my signature and I'm going to begin just by trimming this white with my paper trimmer. So here are my pages, nicely trimmed down. Um, and before I go any further, if you are brand new to junk journaling, you may not have come across these little beauties. This is an ink dauber and this is a an ink pad. <laughs> I actually love uh, Rangers by Tim Holtz um, Distress Inks. This one is walnut. You can't see the label because I keep this on top so it's all stained. Uh, and what we do here is we just get a little bit of ink and to get rid of this white raw edge of the paper we can run our ink dauber along there like that and we can also come in and do this sort of affair <laughs> all around the edge to give us a nice aged effect. There's another way we can treat that. Let's do that here. We can put our ink dauber down on a sheet of paper and just with very lightly inked dauber, very lightly bring your ink dauber over the edge of the paper. And what that will give you is a nice kind of distressed edge. And you can do that to all your edges of your pages and your ephemera. Um, the, these pages are 120 gram. Um, I like to use this for standard pages. It's nice and sturdy. It's sturdy enough to hold a pocket, but it's not too thick that it starts to feel like card. 
Um, now, a signature uh, in a journal, this one is just going to be one signature to give you the basics, but you may have uh, three, four, five or more signatures in a journal. Um, and this is the one set that's sewn together. So you'll stitch those together. Then you'll have your next signature and your next signature, because you can appreciate that if you had, I don't know, 30 or so pages, folded together like that, nothing would sit together very nicely. You'd have a load of pages sticking out in the middle here um, and it just wouldn't work so well. So that's why we work in signatures. Now, uh, I see a lot of people folding each page individual, individually and then popping the next one on the outside of it. I like to fold my signature all together in one go because they sit nicer um, if you do it that way. Now, you can have a look um, at how you want these pages to be arranged. For instance, at the moment, all of mine are going to have the, um, the more decorative page on the right and the plainer page on the left. And I can, I can switch that up. I can change it about. I can, for instance, flip one over so that now when that's all folded together, I've got this nice double page spread together and the next page is going to be a plainer spread. So you can do that. I'm going to be quite random about this, I think. Like that. <laughs> there we go. And I'm going to, I don't think I want that one on the front. You just have a play about, have a play about. Go on, that'll do. That'll do fine. Uh, and now I'm going to fold my pages together. And I'm going to do that, like I say, just in one fell sweep. Match up my edges. Bring everything down and give it a squish. Now, this is a bone folder. This is also a bone folder. Called a bone folder because they were traditionally made out of bone. Now, of course, like everything else, they're made out of plastic. And what we do with these is we run this down our folds to give us nice sharp creases and folds and there's my signature uh, of how many pages did I use folks six so now I've got this 12 page let's count them and if you go on sides uh, we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. So you can see from those six pages, we make quite a nice little booklet. So that's what we're going with. Uh, and before we go any further, I had all sorts of problems with my printer today. My daughter used my printer um, and it messed up my settings. So even though I was setting it correctly, I was having pages coming out like this, which was really annoying. But actually, it's turned out to be quite useful uh, because I'm going to make use of some of these. And I think it's important to note if you make mistakes, don't throw things away. Keep them. You may well be able to use them. So I've reverse printed this with something plainer. So I've got the option to use it. Uh, let's have a look at another one of these pages. This one came out the wrong way around. So I've overprinted it again with a plainer sheet. So I can use that now. I've got a usable page. This one I can make into a flip, for instance. So I've reverse printed that one. What happened wrong with this one? Oh, this again, going the wrong way around. Uh, so I've overprinted it with roses. <laughs> So you can play about with your printer. If you make mistakes, this one worked out quite well. Uh, if you make mistakes, you can overprint with other pages uh, and uh, get some interesting results. And now I've got this page that I can I can play about with. So that's that. Um, now we've got our signature folded. We can have a look at introducing some other things. And I've got some other little bits and bobs here. I've got a doily. Uh, I've got a couple of envelopes. I've got this page taken from a little notebook. I've got a nice glassine envelope and I've got a plain envelope here. Incorporate whatever you want within these pages. Some of them I'm going to sew in. So for instance, I might like to consider having this envelope as part of my journal. Uh, so I might want to put that there. 
like that and then when I've open, come to open it up I've got this little tuck spot there I can decorate this do different things so I'll pop that one in there I've got my lovely glassine envelope that I want to get in somewhere that's my lovely centre spread so I can think of a way to incorporate my glassine envelope and I think what I'll do here just for now because I can always go in and doctor it later and cut it about a bit is I'm going to pop that just in there doesn't have to be central doesn't have to be the same size I'm going to use one of these sheets as well and I think I'll mix that up a bit and get that one say in the center here <laughs> that's too long look that's great I'll do something with that later and I've got my doily uh, doilies are really really nice little additions just to pretty things up if that's your vibe now this one is obviously too big I can cut it down now I can cut it down later I can fold it in half I can do whatever the heck I like uh, and just have fun with this little bit of creativity I think I'll go in I wonder if I fold that in half like that so there's a lot that you can do just make it up as you go along and you can always deal with it later <laughs> I'll pop that in like that uh, and that's all I'm going to do for this signature I think so now I'm going to fold it all up again together and it might be a good idea if I start at the middle and just make sure that these anything that needs to line up on the on the spine this is the spine by the way is all nicely lining up so it folds I don't care at this point if things are sticking out over the edge my envelope comes around there just nicely and then I've got my next page there. My next page has got nothing in it. Oh, and what you can do as well, let's do one of those. For instance, I've got, what have I got? don't really want to be repeating my pages. Yeah, for the sake of popping it in, I'm going to trim this page down. So I've got a smaller page, but that's still in keeping with the theme. Back in a mo. So I folded this page in half so I knew that this fold would be on this spine here and then trimmed it down. And I'm gonna place it somewhere. <laughs> I'm gonna place it somewhere far away from its page because I know it appears. That seems to be okay. Let's pop it in the front here, why not? Oh, is that the front page? No, it isn't. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. That'll work. That's looking good as a first signature. So I've really bulked out this signature now with these extra bits and bobs. I can cut this down now or I can cut it down later or I can fold it in on itself or, you know, something. I'll deal with that when I get to it. So here's my signature and you will notice that you've got this kind of stepping thing going on. These pieces in the middle are sticking out a little bit these pieces are having to work harder and go around the rest of it so that's normal that's quite normal um it's... now for the cover because this is a single signature and this is a beginner's guide i'm going to go for a nice simple cover as well and i've printed out a plain sheet uh, a darker plain sheet on 300 gram paper the heaviest that i can get through my printer and i've reverse printed that um, with this sheet as well just because I wanted that dark on the front because I may embellish that with something else yet. So I wanted it to, to be quite striking, but yet quite simple. Now, if you've got a borderless printer, obviously you can print to the edge with this one. Um, I haven't done that because for those people without a borderless printer, I didn't want to exclude you, my loves. So what I'm going to do here is I folded this sheet in half. And when I fold it round, you can see that, uh, let's get to the end here, you can see that obviously this cover is ever so slightly uh, longer than my journal because I trimmed these pages down. But you'll also notice that my pages are sticking out a little bit. Now you, you can either go with that because it's a junk journal, that's normal, that's fine, or you can trim that, trim that down. And I'll show you how to do that in a little while. But for now, I want to uh, begin my embellishment on this cover. I've also printed out uh, this page 
from uh, one of the kits. Um, you can use all sorts of different things. This is just a single idea for you. So I've got this page and I've reverse printed that with a planar pattern sheet. So for the edges of this one, obviously we don't want uh, these white edges. So I'm going to use, I've got some quite bright rose gold washi tape there, but I think I prefer this matte pale gold here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a strip of it half on and half off. If you want to do it this way, you can. It's a bit of a fiddle. Get yourself a piece of tape that's too long. <laughs> and hold it down. <laughs> Put it down flat like that. Whoops. And you can put your piece of paper on half on and half off or you can go for it this way which is the way I'm going to do it and I'm just going to eyeball that it's quite tricky to know where you're getting it straight so use your pattern if you can to help you line that up and you're aiming to put it just to cover that white space let's have a look how deep we need to we can go so we've got it half on and half off let's have a look at the end of this tape Okay, so I can see on my pattern where that takes me. So I'm letting this tape go off the edge a little bit and I'm just following the pattern here, which has been really helpful in helping me do that. Then you can flip that over. You can tear off this excess on the edge here and then you can bring this over and I would suggest bringing it over from the middle. You're kind of pulling it over. You don't want any creases or wrinkles. So treat this edge of the paper as if it's a plane in its own right, if that makes any sense, even though it's very, very thin. Any little crinkles you can squish out with your nail, hopefully. So that's given me quite a nice little edge now to that very simple cover. And what I'll do then, if I can locate my scissors, is snip off these little excess bits on the ends. And then I will repeat that for the bottom. It's going to look quite good. This, These two colours are really, really sweet together. Uh, I'm going to just check off by eye how much is going on, how much is going off, seeing where this edge of the tape marries to that pattern so I know where I'm going with it. <laughs> Try not to do what I've just done there. Uh, let's go again. OK, so I'm going for half on, half off. A little bit of overlap on the edge there. I'm trying to keep that straight if I can. <laughs> Failing miserably. There we go. That's fine. It's a little bit off, but as my nan would say, blind men on galloping horses wouldn't notice. And just make sure you pull this around like this so you get it all onto this page. You can see where I've gone off a little bit there. It's not quite straight, but that's fine. And this washi tape is nice and thin as well, so it doesn't interfere too much with things like your crease. Uh, right, last two edges. Again, cutting my, tearing myself a piece that's too long, just checking out what where half on is, and I can see where it needs to be on this pattern. I can also see through the tape just a little bit as well, which is helpful. But that'll do. Look at that, that's perfect, Emma, perfect. And then you're pulling this round bit at a time, bit at a time. Squishing that down now with these edges because these are the ones that are on the outside. You just want to make sure you get that nice and tight in there with your nail before you go trimming off. Again, just give that a nice little rub in with your nail. Okay. Last one. Looks nice. It looks nice. Uh, there, half on, half off. I can see through this tape. What a joy. And then pull it round. Smooth it out. Cinch it in and snip it off. 
Oh, it looks really, really nice. I love these colours. There we go. So that's my cover done on three sides. Now I feel that I need a little bit of something on that side. I might end up covering this with a piece of lace. I don't know. But just for the sake of it, I'm going to um, cut myself a piece that's a little bit, actually a little bit more than I want it to be. I can do it this way, can't I, like this, so I can see where I'm going half on and half off. Can't see through it at the moment. The sunlight's, um, oh, so I'm coming there, okay. So I can see where I'm coming on my pattern. And I know my pattern's nice and straight, so that's helpful to me. Um, but that's more <laughs> by good luck than good management. I didn't plan that um, helpful pattern. Uh, right, so I can open this up now. Pop it all down. And, oh, look, I've got a crease there. Try and squish that out. And now when I come to fold this piece up, I'm going to fold this inside like this. And I'm going to pop another piece of tape that's slightly shorter than my page this time over the top of that to match and line up with that piece that I folded on the inside. And that is, give that a good press down because this is gonna complain when I crease it. <laughs> you can use your, your folding bone for that kind of job. There, but like I say, if you're, if you've got, um, if you wanna print to the edge, if you've got a borderless printer, you go ahead and do that and you can ink your edges and make that look really nice. But that looks really good. It looks really finished. So now I can have a think about actually stitching this thing together. Now I was going to trim this down uh, after uh, I put the spine on, but I don't think I will. I think I'll do it now. Um, if you want to leave yours like that with bits sticking out, absolutely fine. That is normal junk journal uh, behaviour. But I'll show you how you can trim this down quite simply. So you want to make sure that your pages are all lined up nicely, that everything's all butting up into the spine and it's sitting where you want it to be, that these pages are all nicely in line. And then you can get a couple of bulldog clips. Bulldog clips are invaluable, by the way. <laughs> Whoops. And you can pop a couple of bulldog clips on. And they're really nice and heavy duty and they'll keep everything uh, nice and still. Nothing will move around there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get our ruler. We're never going to try cutting that way. That's a fool's game. You want the bulk of your uh, journal underneath um, the ruler that you're going to be holding down. It's a bit tricky for me to see that edge. And then I'm going to draw a line. I'm not going to draw a line. If you want to draw a line, measure out by all means. Do that. I don't like. Uh, I don't like drawing out when I don't have to. <laughs> I don't like rulers. I don't like numbers. And so I like to just do everything by eye. And I don't even mind if it's a little crooked. <laughs> so I'm going to cut all of these pages now. Everything sitting nicely. I'm going to spread my hand out and apply a nice firm pressure. Uh, I'm not killing myself with the amount of pressure I'm putting on there, but it's a nice firm pressure and that ruler isn't going to move anywhere. And then I am going to just begin to cut. I'm not, oh, this ruler, I hate this ruler. I cut into the blooming ruler. I'm just cutting a line. I'm not messing about with these edges, not moving them or anything like that. And I'm just going to keep cutting a line, making sure that my ruler is, at, uh, my knife blade is at 90 degrees to my ruler. And I'm just going to keep going in that vein, making sure I don't move my ruler. If you do move your ruler and make a bad cut, um, you can make a slightly, you can bring your ruler in a bit and make that cut again. So that's all mine cut there. And now I've got this really, really neat edge. If I want to, and if I can find my ink, <laughs> it's a right mess <laughs> off camera now. <laughs> there we go. I've got my ink. Uh, whilst these are all stuck together, whilst I've still got my bulldog clips on, I can go along and I can just lose some of that white edge. 
there and I can go and I can do the pages individually if I want, like I've already shown you. So there we go, that's that. Now let's stitch. So to stitch, I am going to need a big old book. Doesn't matter what, so long as it's got some depth and it's got a spine here uh, that you can rest that in. Um, so open it sort of kind of to the middle. And my cover goes on as well. Check I've got, is there an upside down? I don't think there is, but I think that's the better way around. Uh, take off your bulldog clips, you don't need those now. And you want to open this baby into the middle. Now when you line this up, so you've got an equal, there's only a little, a little margin at the top and the bottom, but there is a margin. Try and line that up so everything's sitting nicely. And then you can pop your bulldog clip back in place, incorporating the cover this time. Just so as you know, everything's not going to slip. And you'll notice that these pages now are staggered inwards. Now we've trimmed them. When we close it, they'll be nice and flush again. So that's that looking really good, looking lovely. Uh, now we want to begin to stitch. Now to stitch, this is the way I like to do it. There are all sorts of different ways to do, do uh, to skin a cat. That's the term, isn't it? I'm just going to cut myself a piece of paper. It's just a little bit longer, but that's, that's fine. That's okay. I'm going to fold this piece of paper in half. I might as well trim it down to the size, doesn't really matter to me very much. There, and then I'm going to uh, fold this piece of paper in half this way. And then I'm going to fold it down on itself again. And then I fold it down on itself again. So now I've got um, one, two, three. Uh, if I trimmed it down a little bit more, I could have five. Okay, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with um, marking where I want my stitch there and here and here. And I'm just going to bring this up to about there. So I'll have another stitch that's about there like that. And now I want to take my pokey tool. This is a Bradall um, for making holes before you put your screws in or your nails in or something like that just normal from a hardware store you can get yourself a little book binding kit if you want to so with my spine in place now and i can feel this groove here everything's sitting nicely in that groove i've got my little um hole making template here i'm simply going to make one <laughs> two and I can feel when it goes all the way through right the way through to the blooming table probably <laughs> three I'm not sure that went all the way through I've got arthritis in this wrist <laughs> there we go so that's my five holes if you want to make more holes you can do uh, and if you've got little bits and bobs let's have a look at what's happened there without moving all of this I have got little bits and bobs in there now thankfully three of my holes have come across into this little glassine envelope which isn't sitting straight but we can deal with that later um ditto with that one if you've got something particular that one's fine if you've got something particularly small uh, you may need to just make sure that you've your holes are punching through that doesn't matter if your holes aren't um evenly spaced really doesn't matter at all so we've got that. Look, we've got our holes. That's as simple as that is. You can use wax cotton. Uh, you can use um, normal cotton doubled up. You can use book binding thread. There's all sorts of things you can use. Now, I've got this flipping old <laughs> bit of uh, embroidery thread that I like the colour of. And it's a right old mess. So I'll just get myself a length of that. You need about two and a half. Uh, you could go three just to be on the same. No, actually, actually go three. Yeah, go three. OK, I'll untangle this and we'll come back. So I've managed to untangle my embroidery thread. Well done me, took a bit of doing. And I am going to go with three times the length of my book. So there, and I'll go a little bit more as well. 
and I'll cut myself that little piece of thread off the end and find myself a needle. Now my needles are really quite hefty over here. <laughs> I think they're furniture repair needles. Um, yours don't have to be as hefty as this. A normal needle will do fine. Oh, this piece of string is rather nice, isn't it? Oh, that's embroidery thread. Maybe I should go with that. One, two. Yeah, that's long enough. How does it look on the outside? Not as nice as me blue, maybe. Not as nice as me blue. Come on. Go with the extra mile parish and restretch your needle. <laughs> benefit of a, a bigger needle of course is that it's easy to thread right so I am going to begin at the top now you don't have to begin at the top you don't certainly don't have to begin at the outside but I want to allow uh, a little bit just in case I want to put a little dangle on this outside and if I want to do that I know that I'm going to want to put it on the outside so this is the fiddly bit because you've got to get that needle through there that went through really well the gods are smiling folks and I'm going to leave myself uh, a bit of a tail there and I'm going to press that down with my finger at the back so it doesn't go through while I go through this next hole. And then I'm going to come up through the back of that hole there. So you can see it's a nice, simple running stitch. And then come back up through this one at the bottom here. And when I get to there, make sure that everything's all nice and tight at the back. Bring my needle back through. So I'm making this running stitch now in the opposite direction. Looks great, looks great. Back through and then turn the whole thing over. And I've now got two fairly nice long tails that I can tie in a knot up here nice and tight. Um, if you don't want to consider putting any little dangles or beads or whatever's on the outside of your um, journal, uh, start at the inside so that you've got your your knot hidden but as it is I'm quite happy with this it's just a question now of tying a knot without that going loose which I always find a little bit of a challenge done it so there we go I'm going to leave those there for now and that is our stitch bound journal actually complete the basics are all there you have an actual functioning journal and here it is in all its glory all its pages are stitched in nicely look at this looks great it's got a little glassy envelope on a bit of a wonk but never mind never mind it's all part of the rustic charm of the junk journal <laughs> It looks really, really nice, really nice. These three kits uh, work together beautifully. It's the Blue Daydream, Blue Roses and Butterfly Blue. They just coordinate nicely. We need to deal with this, obviously. And there's one of my misprints there. Got that rose upside down. That's annoying. Oh, well, there we go. I hope I haven't got that the other wrong way around. I haven't, have I? No. <laughs> there we are. So that's it. Right, in the next part, we're going to carry on and we're going to look at now embellishing this and making a closure for the cover. So you may remember uh, I printed out this page here and reverse printed it with uh, patterns, but fairly um, basic pattern. Uh, I was going to just cut out one of these and use it to embellish the cover, but I've had a bit of a brainwave, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to trim this down and we'll come back and have a look at it. So here is my uh, little piece trimmed down and my plan here is to fold this in half. I like so. And then use this as the actual closure for my journal like that. I think that works quite nicely. There are so many options for you, so many. This is just one uh, and me thinking creatively about how I'm going to make this make this thing work. So I'm going to go again with my uh, gold washi tape and I'm going to give myself a nice border here because I don't want that white showing. So I do the same as I did last time, all the way around. I love washi tape. I don't use it very often. 
Uh, but this project is inspiring me to have a think about how I might be able to use it. Now then, I can. Uh, you're making creative decisions, creative choices all the time. It's great. I love it. It's my favourite thing. Uh, I can go all the way around with this gold again, which would look really, really nice. Or I could corner around my edges. We're on these little gizmo, gizmos that if you haven't come across those... And I do, do forgive me if you know all this stuff. I'm I'm aiming at real beginners to junk journaling. Um, you can round off your corners very nicely. That's a nice finish. So I could round off my corners. I could do some heavy inking there. That would be a bit different. If things might start to look a bit square um, and a bit savey if I were to do this all the way around. So I think for the sake of uh, the video and keeping it nice and uh, varied, I'll go in with my ink. Where's my ink? If I don't like it, I can always go over it. I'll leave um I'll leave rounding the corners until I've decided quite what I want to do. You see, because it's all great, isn't it? Following instructions. And with a lot of my kits, yeah, you do need to because they're uh, you've got to fit these things together <laughs> in the way that they were designed. But with a lot of things, like with the journals, for instance, the journal kits, you've got so many options. I do quite like that, but I think, I think, I think, what should we do? What should we do? Um, I'd say vote, but <laughs> there's no time for me to check the uh, check the results because I want to crack on with this. I think, and I, I, I'm tempted to keep it nice and neat, even though that annoys me a little bit. Am I tightening up here for the for the sake of the video? Uh, I used to be a watercolor illustrator, um, and that used to happen. I'd go to make a, a video or somebody had asked me to paint a portrait of their beloved child or, or, or their mum or something like that. Um, and whereas I could really usually make these lovely free watercolours, as soon as somebody asked me to do something, I'd just tighten right up and it'd be a shadow of its uh, potential. There we go. So we're going nice and neat if I can untangle my scissors from this piece of string. Oh, this looks nice actually it does look nice i could round off my corners but um the extra issues getting taped around the corners um it's a little bit outside the remit of this uh, beginner's tutorial on building a basic journal and of course you know these techniques that you see in here carry them forwards into other things as well it's not just about this it's about using your your creative nous <laughs> to get the job done in your own uh, unique creative way. So don't be afraid to have fun and play with it. And if you get these silly little uh, misprints, like I got a lot of them today. Oh, I didn't press those down. I'm sure. I'm sure things will be fine. Um, yeah, play with those as well. You know, uh, when I was painting, incidentally. Um, I used to do this thing where I painted for the bin. So I'd, I'd just give myself, I don't know, however long I fancied, half an hour, an hour, where I'd just paint knowing that I was going to throw it in the bin. And because I was going to do that, um, it meant that it didn't matter. All, pre all pressure to create a finished product had gone. And so if you're messing about with uh, coming to journaling, you may have come from a card background, in which case you'll know loads of things. <laughs> um, but if you're brand new to it, give yourself permission to play. Uh, that's where the magic happens. That's where you'll find, oh, there's a little bit I can take forward or absolutely no, not doing that again. <laughs> but either way, um, you're going to have fun. You're going to lose that. Um, knowing that you're going to throw it away, you're going to lose that pressure. Look, and that's my cover and that works really, really nicely. Um, so what I'm going to do here now is line that up kind of in the middle like that. Turn this over. Oh, is that in the middle? Doesn't really matter. I'd have preferred if the butterfly was on the front, but it hasn't panned out for me. So we're going with it. And then I'm going to get my glue. Where's my glue? Now I use this. This is Kalal glue. I really like it because it's alcohol based. Uh, I love the way it smells. 
um, like a Sharpie marker or something like that. Uh, but what I love most about it is because it's alcohol based, it doesn't wrinkle your paper. So I can put a whole load of it onto a piece of paper. I want to stick to another paper. I get no wrinkling because there's no water content. And what I also find absolutely invaluable and what I use most of the time is this little needle tipped bottle. Now, I think I got these for um, they they were sold for vape juice, uh, for e-juice, for electronic cigarettes. Um, but they've got just the needle tip I use. You'll find them. They're all over. Uh, they're all over Amazon and such like. And the way I usually like to do this as well. Um, and because I'm going to go, am I going to make a pocket? Let's make a pocket. Uh, I don't know how well this washi tape takes to this glue. This is the only thing. So I'll give myself quite a nice wide glue border there. And I'll make sure that I glue onto this paper as well, just in case the washi tape's a bit of a pig to glue. Uh, so I'm going to glue there. I'm going to glue here. And I'm going to glue up this side and I'm leaving. I'm not gluing all over, although you can do. You can glue this whole thing down, which is probably more sensible. <laughs> but I'm going to make a pocket. I always like to make a pocket wherever I can make a pocket. <laughs> and when I've done that, put my glue down. If you're using a tape runner, oh, tape runners are good too. But I don't like them because they're a waste of blooming plastic. You throw the plastic uh, container away and uh, I don't like that at all. So I'll just pop my glue on like that and then I'm going to let that glue go tacky for a few minutes so that when I come to stick it down, it goes straight down, almost as if it was a tape runner, but I still get that little wiggle room to move things about. So I'll give that a minute. So my glue has had a chance to go a bit too blooming tacky. I hope it's not dry. Uh, I had a cat-related incident, cat jumping off the windowsill, knocking everything down with it. Usual, usual behaviour in our house. So my glue's gone tacky. Oh, am I getting this the right way up? I'm going to trust that I am because I'd already done it, hadn't I? And then I'm just going to push this up and stick it down. Look at that. Let's turn it over, check everything's looking nice there. It looks great. Give that a moment now <laughs> to grab and I'm going to have some coffee. Now... When we turn this over, we can see we have got something a little appropriate that I can pop in there that we've made a little pocket at the back here. And that seems to have stuck quite nicely. The, uh, the washi tape hasn't minded being stuck. And then we've got this piece around the front that we'll deal with further. But what I want to look at now, my dears, is um, to begin to add pockets and tuck spots. So I've printed out... Um, a couple of pages. Uh, your pockets may be different shapes. They may have fancy fluted edges. I've gone for these because they're nice and easy to cut out. Uh, and I've got an idea of something else I can do with them as well. Um, these pages I haven't reverse printed because I'm going to be sticking them down. OK, I'll go and cut those out and we'll come back and set to. Now, I like to cut out as much as I can with my paper trimmer. I've got quite a heavy duty one, which is over there, which is why I disappear off to do it. Um, some things you can't cut out with a paper trimmer, um, so you need to go in with scissors. And for long straight lines, it's helpful to use a nice big pair of scissors. So you can just do single strokes like that. And if your cutting skills are a little unmastered, uh, don't worry about it too much. Uh, you've got so much going on within this journal and so much going on with each element that really you won't notice it when you're done. And a little bit of ink on those edges to hide that raw white. If you want to vintage it up and grunge it up a little bit, uh, that works really, really well. OK, I'll cut the rest of these out off camera. You don't need me to see me cutting these out. And now this is the bit that I absolutely love. I'm playing about with some of these bits and bobs, some of these pockets and tuck spots and belly bands that I've cut out and inked up the edges of. Oh, and incidentally, did I mention um, that I've gone 200 gram on these in 60? I've gone a little bit heavier because I wanted um, I wanted that extra little bit of stability. So I'm going to begin, I think, um, with a belly band and I'm going to go, I can go either across and that is for popping 
a little bit of ephemera in i can either go across or i can go down and even though those butterflies are indicating uh, that i should possibly go this way around i'm taking no notice of them and i'm going to go this way around so i'm going to cut off just that little bit there because i don't want to cover up my um my little border of gold washi tape i love that washi tape by the way i think that's worked out really really well um and i'm going to pop a seam of glue quite a nice seam of glue quite a thick seam i don't need to be able to get underneath all of that so i'll go like that um and i could let this glue go tacky when you're going straight down onto a flat surface it's kind of all right just stick it down you can stick it down anyway whatever you're doing you don't need to let your glue go tacky it's just my technique that i really really like and i'm going to line that up by eye and stick that down and then squidge it all over the place <laughs> there we go so that's my belly band and when that's dry it can be used uh, to pop what have i got here it can be used bigger than this i'll put a bigger piece of ephemera in it can be used to pop some ephemera in one of these quite likely so i'll get my big scissors and i'll cut this bad boy out i trim this normally but cutting's fine a little bit of ink lose those white edges grunge it up. I can also go in with my corner rounder if I want to, which I would do before I ink, <laughs> not afterwards. But just to show you. And then obviously this belly band would be dry and that piece of ephemera fits nicely under there. Uh, I think I've got a patterned piece on there, but it's still pale enough for writing on so I can use that as a writing space. So that's that piece done. That's as simple as that is. Now this piece here, this page, oh, this is the problem with some of my pages. They're so beautiful and decorative. I don't want to cover them up. Um, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so now it's just a question of this, really. You're just going through um, your whole journal, deciding what you want to put and where. Look, that matches that. That would make a nice pocket there, wouldn't it? Could pop that there or could pop something completely different there. That's staying as it is. Oh, that's quite a nice little page. So this is the way it goes from here on in. Now, I really like that, uh, is to just keep working your way through the, through the journal. You've got your little piece. Place it in different places. Decide where you think it looks nice. Trim it down if it doesn't fit. and pop it on. I'm giving that just a little border all around by the looks of it. There we go. The, these needle bottles are really invaluable. Absolutely love them. So there's another pocket done that I can pop some ephemera into. Now these pockets haven't got tabs and that's nice because we haven't allowed a spine here. So we don't want to get too bulky inside because we'll start to struggle. So I'm going to leave this as a writing space, for instance. That can just be my opening page. It's so lovely. I've got glue on it. Uh, another advantage of this Kalal glue is that you can rub it off just like a, an eraser. It's really nice. So there we go. They are my first few pages absolutely done and finished. I've got this doily to contend with here, haven't I? And I think what I'm going to do is just trim this down level with the top of my journal no messing about whatsoever there just do it i might do it from the outside be a bit easier perhaps difficult to get the scissors in there we go there that's taken that care of that little anomaly and i've got this as a writing space now which is quite nice. You need to keep going back uh, if you're gluing down things like this and not letting things dry <laughs> as you're turning the pages. Um, you might find you end up sticking pages together, so just keep going back. Uh, that page is beautiful all by itself. Could add a pocket down here that could take that quite well. Maybe not this one. 
but then we'd be covering that up. But th these are the sacrifices you have to make sometimes with these decorative kits. This one here is quite nice and can handle a pocket. And the butterfly, I'm thinking, would be quite nice there. So we'll do that. Again, with this narrow seam of glue. If you want to use a tape runner, use a tape runner. Uh, like I say, don't like them myself, don't like the plastic waste. Line up your pocket and pop that on. There we go. Lovely, lovely, lovely. What shall we do next, guys? Now, I've got one of these left. Um, I don't want to cover up that. I think I'll leave that as a writing space, just as it is. Oh, and of course, I have got um, all of these blinking um, misprints. My printer was really misbehaving. Uh, and I've also got reverses on some of those. So I can look through these. Oh, here's something that can happen. I've got this misprint here. If I go back to this page, okay, I'm going to trim down this page. I'll come back to you in a sec. Now, I didn't want to lose this um, vintage typography on this page. I think it's really pretty and I don't have to because I've trimmed down my page. I've cut out this piece here, trimmed it down so it will fit. And now I've got um, what's called a ghost pocket so that when you look at the page, it doesn't look like there's anything there and you've still got the page intact and the aesthetic uh, but you've also got a space for popping ephemera or paper or something like that so just line that up <laughs> like that squiggle it around a little bit until you've got it lined up and there's your ghost pocket i haven't inked that because i wanted it to blend seamlessly and you've got a space then obviously when it's dry for putting bits and bobs and then when you take those bits and bobs out you've got that whole page complete i love that you can make ghost pockets going straight across uh, as i've done here you can angle them you can shape them uh, with a pair of scissors you can do what you want with those so long as you um, make the pattern line up it works so that's another page complete i'm just going to go back through check i'm not <laughs> i'm not gluing things together there we go it's looking good my writing page i've got a pocket here for ephemera i've got this just as a writing space i'm leaving that alone i've got my ghost pocket i've got a pocket here now that will work for bits and pieces of ephemera this page i'm leaving blank i think i'm leaving blank um because i like it i could let's make a shaped pocket yeah let's make a shaped pocket here just to show you so I'm going to make use of this little scrap here, cut up here. I'm going to ignore this. I'm going to come round. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a border all around. I'm not going to be loyal to those shapes. I'm not going to cut tight into those shapes. Things can get a little bit too fussy. <laughs> and then I'm just going to come round like this. Let's see how that looks. I'm going to cut off this bit. And I may or may not like that, but that looks OK. Let's see what happens when we ink the edge. Give it a bit of definition. Um, inking is sometimes like drawing around the edge of something as well. So it gives you a little bit of extra interest on there. Kind of like it, kind of like it. Let's see if there's anywhere else where that will be better served. Oh, my goodness, on the envelope. <laughs> I might map that envelope, actually, uh, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that in a minute. This space here, I think, is maybe better for that little bit there. I like that bit better. So let's pop this on. And this one. I haven't really got three edges to glue. I've got two and a little bit. So that's what I'm going to go with. It's OK to just glue two edges and then it becomes really more of a tuck spot than an actual pocket, which we'll look at in a minute or two. So that's that. That's that stuck on. And that's another space then for more ephemera or a sheet of folded writing paper or something like that. Whilst we're here, 
let's have a look at this envelope. I've got this nice piece here that's an overprint. Um, I'm going to trim this down a bit. I'll mark it off first to size so I know what I'm doing. I'll give it a little bit of a border. I won't go tight. Um, oh, I can get the blue for you on there. Look, if I trim that down about here and about here. Right, I'll come back in a minute. So there we are. That's that cut down. We can do a bit of inking. <laughs> inking is a little trickier when the paper's a bit thinner. Of course, this is 100 and... 100 and what? 120? 120 gram. I think I said before that these are 160, didn't I? They're not at all. They're 120. This is 200. Uh, these pieces have gone 200 and this is 120. Now, again, I can glue this all the way down um <laughs> but i always like to put a pocket where i can put a pocket so uh, i'm going to do that i could actually make a flip here let's make a flip let's show you how a flip is made if i can do it yeah of course i can do it i can add a bit more paper if i want to um i'm going to cut this section off a bit counterintuitively here And I'm going to glue <laughs> another piece on. If I had enough of a flap uh, with that white space, uh, I'd have used that, but it wasn't quite deep enough. So get myself a piece of paper that's a little bit longer than I need it. I'm going to glue half of this piece of paper to my journaling card here. And squish that up a little bit, squish that glue on like that. I'll take it off here because that's foolish. <laughs> Stick that on like that. Then I'm going to um, trim this down. If your piece of paper, uh, I can do better than this actually. If your piece of paper has got a bit of a pattern on the back, then obviously so much the better. So, you know use a bit of um, that kind of jazz <laughs> but I've got a white piece here now and I'm going to I'm going to run with that uh, and then we're going to fold this piece in half like this could have folded it in half first so this is making our flip now we've got this tab and if I just trim a little bit of that off those edges uh, and then if I come along here and I glue this under here I then have a flip and that my dears is as simple as a flip is um, which means that I want to glue all of this down now so I'm going to apply with my big glue some glue all the way over this piece I was going to make it into a pocket uh, but it's turned into a flip and that's grand so was some glue <laughs> all over there that's the technical term um, and then you've got your piece here. Let's make sure we're the right way round. And we're the right way round. Uh, so this is going to fit like this. You're going to pop this tab over here like this. Fold that around so that you know that it's working properly for you. Uh, and then obviously you need to get a bit of glue on this panel here. We're getting all advanced dear folks i didn't mean to get this advanced with the uh with the beginner's tutorial uh, but this is great because you know you've got some uh in one little video you've got all these ideas that you can take forward into your journaling so for instance this could have had a, a flip here there could have been another one on the other side you can even have you can have them at the top and the bottom you can just go for it with the flips and they make for uh really a nice lot of added interest let's go back to the beginning See how we're getting on. Make sure we're not sticking things together that don't need to be stuck together. <laughs> That's fine. That's lovely. 
you've got your flip here now that's great and then this flips over and you've got your envelope now i don't want that to be a white page what should we do what should we do i could put a simple pocket over there but i've still got all of that white uh, that offends me i think i'm going to make from I've got that pattern piece now that'll be all a bit the same no I know what I can do here to cover this white up but also it'll still be active I'm gonna trim this down okay so my video messed up there what I've done here if I can still take this off which I can is <laughs> look at all that <laughs> um is I've trimmed this down. I've got this, which is all a little bit odd on this side. Don't really care. Um, I've applied some glue to this little flap that I've folded under, trimmed down those edges there, and I've stuck that to this edge of my envelope. <laughs> uh, I've got a little bit of a border. That's fine. So I've stuck that down now. And now I've got this going on. So that when I fold this over here, I've just got this half a page poking through but you know I've decided that I don't care I've decided that that's okay uh, and I'm going to make another uh, tuck spot here from this so I've suddenly I've got this flip and these two pages don't match don't mind I don't mind at all it's a junk journal and we're bringing the element of junk back into this um, journal kit that's so beautiful well, it's a mix and match of me three journal kits, this one. So what I'm going to do is put a seam of glue on both of those sides before <laughs> I glue those down. I'm going to find my hole punch. Um, and this is invaluable. Oh, my goodness, I use this so much. They didn't have a one inch one when I went to buy it. And I was a bit annoyed. They only had the one and a half inch. Uh, but this actually is perfect. And I'm so glad that I've got it. So just make a little thumb cut in there. Just adds nicely to the aesthetic you can get a bit of ink on the go there to define that. And then you've got just this impromptu flip. And if when you get further along, you decide you want to put a belly band down there, or you want to, here comes a cat, or you want to put a pocket on there, you can do. And it's just all just lovely and junky there. I really, really like that I've done that. And I'm leaving that envelope open like that I could put some fussy cuts or something on it and I've got space there for storing something really lovely that's that done and I've got my tuck spot here that I've cut out this page I'm going to leave a nice little writing space for a little bit of something emotive this one obviously I'm going to leave just as a little page uh, you can um, stick some fussy cuts or stick a little bit of a uh, let's have a look what we've got a little bit of a border down there might do that and just have a look what I've got here. I'm going to use up these bits as far as possible. I've got those butterflies there. Oh, yes, so I'm going to use those butterflies. I'm going to trim, be back. So here's my butterfly trimmed down a little bit. Uh, I'm going to trim it down a little bit more. I'm going to take this white edge and just snip it into um, a little tab shape, fold that over. And I'm going to stick that on here. I could go on the edge. I could go on the middle. I'm going to go on the middle. And I'm going to stick this down, right? Now, I've got white here. Uh, I'd prefer it to be the aged paper background, I expect. Uh, but I am embracing white in my journals now. I used to reject white out of hand and uh, didn't like it at all. But I do actually now like a little bit of white. So... That's that bit stuck down there. This piece, I'm simply going to fold under nice and straight, Emma, nice and straight. <laughs> so that it sort of marries with the bottom of that page there. And that can either go as a little bit of interest, although that butterfly will be upside down. That could go like that, or it could just be tucked up under there. So when this glue's dry, which it isn't obviously at the moment. Uh, I've now got this writing space <laughs> and I've got, I've gone off the camera now, I've, now, I've got all of this writing space here as well, which is really rather nice. I could glue that on to make a little pocket there and I've got a nice narrow little tuck spot 
for something, but I'm just going to leave that open. I'm going to leave that as a writing space. That's grand. This page I'm going to leave alone. It's so lovely. You could make a ghost pocket if you wanted to print out another page. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. I've got my wonky glassine bag here. Um, and I've also got this lovely page that really deserves just a nice pocket. Uh, or I've got, two, I've got a couple of these. Have I got any more of these? quite like the contrast in that one so I'll stick this on here this is another um, I guess technically a tuck spot because we're gluing up two sides we're not actually forming a pocket that's got three sides so you can go on there and that's you done and dusted <laughs> could put her up here as well actually couldn't we could have the two on one but I'm pacing myself with these pieces because <laughs> otherwise I'm going to be cutting out like loads more and I just want to show you some basic techniques. What do we do with this? If I hadn't cut it out on an angle, it'd be straightforward enough. I'm just going to have to live with this um, to cut it out if I hadn't stitched it in on an angle. So I'm just going to have to live with this. And I think what I'm going to have to do, and I'm going to do this by eye and hope I don't regret it, is take the minimum I can off this envelope and straighten it up and hope that I've made a straight enough of a job. That'll do, that'll do. And I'm gonna thumb cut both of these. Oh my goodness, that does not like doing that. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm gonna go in with the scissors now and rescue that. And take on a little bit of a fiddle. <laughs> Going from the other side. It's gonna work. It's gonna. I tell you what, I'm gonna do. It's gonna be great. There we go. That's my thumb cut. Not quite as intended. Uh, that glassine bag has really bitten me a little bit, but that's fine. By the time we get some little bits and bobs huh, in here. We ain't going to notice because we are going to be so pleased with these little bits and bobs, which I haven't put in yet, obviously. I've got a nice big writing space there. I can give myself um, a nice flip on that page. Might do that. So I'll do that here. Um, save going over to my trimmer. Uh, so I'm going to cut it down a little bit. Don't want all of it. I'm going to lose a bit to my um, tab, so I'll come in a little bit more on this side. And I'll take a bit off the bottom as well. So you see, you can just play. When you get to this kind of point, you're just playing. You're just uh, making it up as you go along in the, I mean that in the best possible way. Um, I need to just make this a little tab because I don't want to lose my words off the end. My dreams take flight, I'll lose the T off my flight. My dreams take fly. <laughs> there we go, just got it on. Get rid of those little corners, makes for a better job. And there you see, I've got another little flip that's going to work beautifully for me. And this one's backed as well, which is obviously much nicer. So pop that on. And there is my little flip. So I've got my nice big writing space there. I've got extra writing space here. Um, and I've got my flip. If I want to um, cover up this, I can do something radical, like make another pocket, which I'll do with this little strip here. So you see, I mean, really, make your misprints. <laughs> Please make your misprints, because you'll uh, you'll be glad you did. Huh. I was cursing my daughter before for uh, messing with my printer. Um, but I'm going to thank her very much when I see her. She's gone out with a friend for lunch. They love walking. She's only 14. Her friend is 15. They walk for miles 
uh, and we live in the countryside so she's gone out walking and um, they're going to stop off at a local eatery for lunch how nice is that when you're 14 and 15 it's blowing a gale i asked them if they wanted a lift they didn't want a lift uh, so nice little thumb cut in there There we go, so I've stuck that down. Uh, I haven't lost a lot of writing space, but I've covered up uh, my little tab there, if you want to do that. And these will then sit either way round, doesn't matter. Let's have a little look back through, check that we're not gluing anything down. And we're absolutely flying now, guys. Really making this journal something quite special. We've got that page that opens into a flip. So as a beginning journaler, now you've got belly bands, you've got pockets, you've got tuck spots, you've got flips, you've got putting extra bits and pieces in between your pages, envelopes and so on. Then we've got the middle spread, leaving that well alone. And we've got this glassine bag. So you can carry on. I think I'm going to end this video here. I'm not sure. <laughs> Let's have a look. I've got a few more bits and bobs, but I'm ready to um, to let you fly. I'm ready to let you go. If you are, like I say, brand new to junk journaling, um, I hope you found this really, really useful and informative. You've got several skills now under your belt, certainly enough to enable you to go off and make um, journals with quite some advanced journaling techniques with the flips and the closure. Uh, I'm not quite ready, am I? Because I need to show you how to close the closure. Uh, and I did think about making this. I need to put these pockets in. I was going to make a special pocket, but uh, I shan't do that here. I'll do it again. <laughs> so we've got that page. Then we've got this page. Then we've got this page. going to leave that so beautiful. Then I've got this page. I've got this bit of envelope. Let's do something with that. I'm not ready to leave you at all. I'm not. I want to go further. And you can see that I've only cut out two pages of ephemera, uh, of pockets rather, uh, and the belly band. And I've made them go quite a long way as well to make a very, very usable, beautiful thing. Now this, let's have a think about this one for a moment. Okay, I'm absolutely gonna have to cover up this sticky because if this gets wet, uh, it's gonna stick to my pages and leave me absolutely scuppered so I'm going to use this page I'm aware that I'm repeating pages in this journal uh, you can either do that or you don't have to uh, you can just keep mixing and matching and printing out pages as you need them really uh, which is the way that I like to work I don't really like to print everything out and then back decide what backings I'm going to use uh, because once I've got my signature down my first initial six pages with the odd bit, bits and bobs like this um, in amongst it. Uh, it's nice to be able to just be quite creatively fluid <laughs> with it. So I, that's how I like to work. But then again, on the other hand, it is nice to have these like misprints and a couple of pages like two hand so that you can if you want to. So that's an extra page cut a little bit smaller. I turn it over, uh, I've got this writing space here and I've got this space here, which I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave that like that and I'm going to call it OK. Uh, I could lick that. I'm not going to. I don't like licking envelopes. So I'm going to glue all along this edge here. And let's not forget that it is a junk journal. And so having elements that are actually junk, like your envelopes and so on, um, are absolutely fine and permitted and valid and lovely. There we go. That's that page stuck on there. Now I have got a little tuck spot there, but I'll never be able to get underneath it. So we'll ignore that. And that's that page. <laughs> like that. I like it. I really like it. I've got a lovely page here that's just going to be left well alone. Uh, I've got some writing pages here which are great. They're just going to be for writing. Beautiful place here. Uh, have I got one of those printed out as an overprint? I don't think I have. I have got this pocket though which I can stick on somewhere. I don't want to go over that. I really love that really love that then we've got this then we've got the reverse of this smaller page that we popped in there 
I've got this nice girl here. She might make a nice little tuck. Or she will make a nice little tuck. I might do her on the back here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm going to do her two edges. Her on there I like that very much that's a nice little finale um, and tuck spots at the top uh, work really well they haven't got any tabs on so there's no depth to them so whatever you put under there really tends to stay put that's not a problem at all and I've got this one here and I might as well go ahead and use that do I want to put that there I find I feel that's quite a nice little addition to that actually because it's a bit too dark to be a writing space and if I do this, I can pop some ephemera in that then can be writing spaces. So we'll do that. And then I think I've used up my two pages of pockets and bits and bobs. I think I have. Yep, yep, yep. So there we go. I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to print out uh, some ephemera that we can then fill these places uh, with and see what uh, we want to do about this colour. See you in a minute. So to fill up all my pockets and tuck spots and whatnot, I've printed out some additional pages and I want this to be a journal. Um, and I'm, I'm aware that I've got quite a lot of pretty pages in my lovely journal here. So I'm going to make some large journaling cards and I've printed all of these on 200 gram uh, with the with a plain paper backing or rather an aged paper backing. But it's quite plain, pale enough to write on. Um, and I've got chosen some large journaling cards and this pretty page here. So I'm going to go ahead. And as if we haven't had enough fun already, <laughs> here are all these bits now um, cut out and I've inked up the edges and I've also uh, corner rounded. Where's my corner rounder gone? There he is. I've also corner rounded uh, some of these shapes. Some of them I've left square so they're not all the same. Some of them I've just done or rather a couple of them. I've just done a couple of edges. Can't find where that is now obviously uh, but I've just gone opposing edges leaving those edges square and that's a nice different way to change up the look as well. But before I go popping these into the various pockets, uh, I want to pick the cream of the crop for my closure. And I've got an idea um, that I was never uh, overly keen on this one as a front. So I think what I'm going to do now is trim this down with me scissors. Try and mark it off first. Just trim this down in a straightish line. Oh, that's a nice little rose I've got left over there, look. <laughs> and I'm going to glue, but I'll film cut this, of course, because I like the look. You don't have to. Just line that up by eye in the middle. I'll make quite a shallow thumb cut. Uh, you don't have to do any of these things, uh, by the way, like I'm doing them. It's not prescriptive. This is to give you ideas and techniques and basics of um, junk journaling. So you can take these ideas forward and you can see how... Um, free I'm being with it and how I'm just sort of like living in the junk journal moment and making those decisions uh, as I go and that's where the fun is that really is where the fun is so don't get too too tied down uh, when you're making this kind of journal into following instructions to the T this is just a jumping off point so now I've got that and I really like that uh, and I've got a nice little card there. I've also got these and I might pop one of these in here. Uh, I've got a couple of tickets. I did sort them out. There they are. That I'm going to um, make a hole in with my hole punch. I'm not going to be using the eyelet setter. Oh, I might use the eyelet setter. Why not? If you haven't got one, don't worry. A simple hole punch will suffice. If you have got one, <laughs> even though you may not use it very often, uh, you'll be very glad you got one. Let's get my eyelets. I think I will set those because it does just add another level of gorgeousness. Now I always go for rose gold ones, so I'm going to go for gold ones today, seeing as that tends to be my theme with this blue. Make sure I've got my eyelet set the right way up. And just pop that in and that makes a beautiful, beautiful finish. I ummed and ahmed about getting one of these for a long time. I couldn't really justify it because I hardly ever like really needed one. Um, 
I use it more than I thought I would and I absolutely love the finish. So if you're debating getting one of those, uh, I can highly recommend. And then I'm just going to get some ribbon. Fold it in half. Pop that ribbon through my eyelet. Either way will do. Make this loop and then feed these two ends through the loop. <laughs> Come on, butterfingers. There we go. And then I've got my nice little uh, bit of ribbon on my tag there. And I can cut that down a little bit. They don't need to be the same length. Make that a little bit more interesting, maybe. There. Oh, I like it a bit shorter. Let's go a bit shorter. There we go. And that piece is then going to go in this pocket here. Or the one with the window. <laughs> They're both rather nice, aren't they? Maybe the one with the window. Uh, same again. A little bit of ribbon. I'll go a bit longer this time. Cut on an angle, obviously, so that you don't fray, unless you want to fray, in which case, fill your boots. I'll go around the other way this side this time, from the front to the back. Let's have a look at the two, the way the two different pieces of ribbon sit in this tag. There we go. Both ways are good. I think I might like the longer ribbon for the outside, and I do like that window, and it ties in with the house there as well, so... That's quite nice. So that makes quite a, a nice, interesting front for me. And I'll use this one inside now. Oh, good grief. Right <laughs> now uh, I need to look at how I'm going to close this thing. And I know I'm going to wrap it with ribbon, but I want to secure my ribbon somehow. I've got this little rose left over that might work for me, which would also give me a tiny little tuck spot in there. I might want a bigger one of those. So I can have a route through my pieces, see what I've got that might work. This piece is all rather big. I want to leave that as it is. It's beautiful. So you're messing about now. You're playing, quite literally playing with these pieces and just having fun with it. Oh, this is the piece where I just corner rounded two edges. And I do like that. And that would work for there as well. I think I'll go with that. You know, I think I'll go with that. Let's check, see if I've got any more darker pieces, because I do fancy a darker. No, I'll go. I'll go with this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself a length of ribbon. Sari trim is also a very popular, um, a popular thing in junk journaling. Um, and I'm going to give myself quite a nice length of ribbon. So about there, so I've wrapped it round, I've got a nice big overlap. I'm going to put some glue on the back of this piece. Now I want quite a nice bit of, quite a nice seam of glue. I want this all to stick down nicely, but I'm not going to cover the whole thing. Oh no. And I'm going to let this go tacky before I attempt to stick it down. So I'm going to leave that for a couple of minutes. I'm going to leave this piece of ribbon to one side for a couple of minutes while I go uh, in here and have fun placing these little darlings in these spaces and I'm just going to go through first of all popping one piece just randomly you can be as thoughtful as you like about this this piece oh look at that we've got that um that opening oh my goodness yeah we've got our flip here and then we turn and we open and we've got this envelope here so that deserves something nice in there doesn't it a nice big postcard perhaps in there that's nice that's nice and we've got this pocket here also deserving of a nice thing pop that in there we've got this pocket here just does it fit me butterfly let's sw swap those around that works that works put me butterfly the other way around so i can see the postcard bit there that's brilliant uh, this side we've got now oh, we've got another clock look at that let's go with that that's great uh, we've got a flip here with a pocket let's get something in that pocket I was going to use this for something I'll keep this to one side for now I can pop that in there uh, I've got my little glassine envelope 
that's a bit crooked here. I'm going to pop a couple of things in there. I think we'll be happy with a couple of things in there. And then I've got some just some decorative pages. I've got the other side of this glassy envelope that I haven't done anything with. And what I think I'm going to do here, because this is sealed, because it's the bottom edge of the envelope, I'm going to take a straight line <laughs> or straightish across here to form this pocket here. And then I think, oh, I was going to stick this down, but this is going to be so nice in here. <laughs> I was going to use this as a little belly band, which you could do. Make another little belly band and uh, pop something underneath it. But I know that that's going to work so nicely in there. Or oh, what I have got here are these three. Now, these are designed to actually stack and they might work particularly well in here. So, yeah, you can see what I'm doing. I'm playing. I'm having a look at what might fit where and I'm sticking it in. You might have um, some fussy cuts, for instance, that you might want to embellish this with a bit further. It's quite wobbly. I like that. Uh, we've got a pocket here. I'm, I can't believe I'm running out of ephemera. thought I had loads and loads and loads. You can really eat it up. Of course, you can double up with this ephemera. You can add as much as you like. Because I could really do with some more. I didn't realise I was going to get through so much. So we've got some nice decorative pages. Got a lovely little page here. I can go in. I have to stop filling it with ephemera because this glue is drying rapidly. Uh, so what I want to do here, because uh, this is going to be wrapped around, I don't want my, my ribbon to be folded in half. Uh, I want, let's have a look, just have a look at what we do want. I want the ribbon to be in equal pieces when it's about this sort of level. So do that, wrap your ribbon around, bring it to the edge of this little flap here. And this, which side, doesn't matter which side, but this side here is where you want to be folding this ribbon. OK, and that'll make sense in a minute. I hope my glue hasn't dried too much. <laughs> pop that on. I'm going to pop a little bit more. Oh, I'm gluing that together. I'm going to pop a bit more glue over here. I'm going to pop a bit more glue over the whole lot, actually. Got a bit carried away with the ephemera. <laughs> oh, that's drying. There we go. And then this piece here is going to glue down up to the edge or nearly up to the edge one or the other. So I'm only gluing down this edge because then that allows me the option of having this as a little tuck spot under there. You may or may not want that to happen. You can glue down this whole piece and I'm quite tempted to do that to be honest with you but I'll leave that for now. So now we've got one short piece of ribbon and we've got one long piece of ribbon okay. So we can wrap the long piece of ribbon around our entire journal. By the time we bring it back around We've got two pieces that are the same length because we measured it properly before we started. I'm not going to tie mine too tight because my glue is still drying under there. But I just want to show you the finished effect. And there it is. You tie it a bit tighter than that, obviously. And that's the finished effect. That's the fastened journal. It's a very, very simple way to keep your journal closed. Alternatively, if you don't want to do that, um, use self-adhesive magnets. I love self-adhesive magnets. Let me show you those. Uh, if you're a beginner, you may not have come across these and you may love them. I've got a little spider crawling down my chest of drawers. <laughs> Um, you may love them as much as I do. It's worth telling you about them. Now, these are nine and a half millimetre by 0.75 millimetre magnets and they are self-adhesive on one side. Now, because they're self-adhesive on one side, uh, you need, if you're going to buy some of these, you need to make sure that you get both north and south polarity because one side is adhesive, so they will only stick on the other side and they are so good. They've got this little paper backing. You pop one on here, you stick that on, take the paper backing off, stick that on, pop the other metal edge to meet it, then take the backing off that, then close the whole thing up, give it a rub down and give it a, a, a minute or so just for that adhesive to do its stuff. And then when you open it, you've got this beautiful magnet closure. It's really, really nice. 
Uh, but we've done ribbon for this one because I wanted to show you that technique as well. So now we've got ribbon closures and magnetic closures under our belts. And I want to show you what these little doodads are for. Uh, I often get asked, uh, yes, but what are these for? Well, I'll show you. These are page dividers. Um, we won't do it with this one down this edge because obviously we've got this closure to contend with. But what we could do is we would pop a little seam of glue on one edge there, pop, a, pop glue all over the other edge, and then that would stick down over one page edge like that and then we go we've got four of these <laughs> so we'd maybe go a few pages in and we'd do the same thing again so that when you've got stuff going on that you want to keep in order I mean these are just decorative in journals I think usually um, but they're there and they look really really pretty and it also means obviously that you can flick to whatever page that you've set that at we could pop them up at the top here that's another option Let's have a look what that looks like when we close our journal. That's quite nice. That's quite nice. Um, and you can also use them to stick on tags like that. Just add another added dimension to your tags. And what you can also do with your tags, and I haven't got enough ephemera here to show you properly, but you can get a little bits and bobs. You can make a little pocket here. You can get a smaller um, piece of ephemera to go in there. You can cut down a little bit of leftover paper that you've got to make a pocket. So you've got room for that there. So many things you can do um, using the basic principles that we've had a look at in this journal. And I think, my dears, I think, I think, I think that I am done now. I think I've shown you enough to enable you to um, fly, <laughs> fly and go and make your own little journal in your own way, taking some of these ideas forwards. The flips are great. Once you realise that you can fold the tab under anything and flip it out or you can use anything as a pocket or just glue down an edge and you've got a tuck spot there, you know, you can do so, so much with these few techniques. So have a lot and a lot of fun. And I will see you very, very soon um, with maybe another video on a different type of closure. Oh, we need to bead these, don't we? What am I talking about? Let's go. Now I have got this box of beads that's left over from some jewellery making that I used to enjoy doing. Um, but it's also got lots of bits in it that are little bits of jewellery. So I suggest if you haven't got a little stash of beads, um, get yourself to some yard sales, car boot sales, um, charity shops, thrift stores, um, and get yourself some little bits of jewellery. They're so, so handy for jazzing up a junk journal. Now I've got my threads here and there are several ways that I can deal with this. This isn't um, a tutorial about this, so I'm not gonna go into any great length, but I've got myself a little bit of jewelry end there and I've got another little bit here and I'm just gonna thread these on like this and I'm gonna tie them off. Now I can plait, I can tie, um, I can twist, I can do all sorts of things. I think I might keep these quite short, or one of them quite short. I'll have the other one a bit longer. And like I say, I don't want to dedicate too much time for this. I do just want to finish this journal off with a little bit of something though. And dangles are quite, uh, are quite nice, they're quite popular. And they really do just add a little bit of something extra to your journal. Right, OK, so I'm going to go this short on this one. So what I'm going to do here, and it's very, very simple, I'm really quite lazy, <laughs> is I'm just going to tie this off. It's not going to be the best finish in the world. Um, really, I'd like to find some little beads that slide onto this uh, macrame, this macrame thread, this embroidery thread, uh, but I haven't got that uh, to hand. And like I say, I'm not putting too much time into it. I'm just coming back on myself and I'm just knotting. So really what I'm doing here now is giving myself a little macrame stitch. And I'm just going to keep going and keep going until I can't go anymore. And this is partly why I didn't make them too long. So I didn't have to do too much of this. 
on this video. And when I get as far as I can get, it's quite nice. I used to love making macrame. There we go. And when I think I've got enough done, oh, go on, don't be too lazy. Get another one in. <laughs> ah, it won't go, it won't go. Go on. There we are. Then I'm going to just simply cut that off. Make sure I don't cut off the wrong end. <laughs> so there's that. It's got a little bit of a macrame doodah on there. This one is longer. Let's see if I can get away <laughs> with doing less. Or is this one need? Okay, so let's go through and have a look. We have got the belly band technique there with the tag underneath it. Um, we've got these smaller pages in, in amongst the bigger pages. We've got writing pages. We've got pockets. We've got tags with little bits of ribbon in them. Uh, we've got this doily page for a writing space. We've got this ghost pocket. Now this one nearly um, passed me by because you really can't see it, but it's there and you can pop your tags in there. We've got another pocket here with some tags in. We've got writing space galore. This one I love. We've got a flip here and then we flip open this envelope. We've got this pocket here that's currently got nothing in it. Really need to print out more ephemera. And then we open it to this page here that could have more going on. You can go more pockets on there. Um, and you've got some tuck spots here. And you can also use, which is what I was going to do, <laughs> you can also use these and make pockets out of these or tuck spots. Glue two edges there and then you've got a nice tuck spot for something big down here. Uh, there's a lot you can do with these few techniques contained in this video. Uh, and when we open this page, we've got a lovely writing space there. We've got this sheet of writing paper that's got this tag that unfolds. And you can do lots with that kind of idea as well on uh, opening this way, opening this way, opening top, opening bottom. We've got a straightforward pocket on there, a lovely tag in it. We've got this lovely flip here that opens to reveal a pocket and this little <laughs> wonky bit of glassy in bag. <laughs> lovely little bit in there. Then we've got some pretty pages that stand alone. Again, if you want to make some ghost pockets out of those, um, just go ahead, print out another page, trim it down, stick it on. You've got another ghost pocket. Boom. Lovely plain writing space there. Now, I did find another pocket whilst I was going through me bits and bobs and tidying my desk up. So I'm going to pop that pocket there just to give that page a little bit of something more and like I said there is lots more that I can do with this lots more uh, but the basic techniques were the uh, were the idea behind the tutorial and I think I've delivered those so feel free to get amongst it go and have fun enjoy your spur of the moment decisions oh look that's on the back of that envelope look that's great enjoy your spur of the moment decisions and just make it as it comes to you just do it one page at a time one page at a time there we are i'm gonna pop that under there and that's it that's our beautiful little journal made i hope you take a lot from that have loads and loads of fun because that is absolutely the main thing uh, and i will see you very soon <laughs>